Hi, it's Gene. Anybody who knows me knows I'm kind of a photo nut. Pretty much always had my iPhone 7S Plus in my hand. But what some of you may not know is I did my own darkroom work about 50 years ago. Um, quite a bit of fun. I mean, a lot of people are getting back into film photography. It's a wonderful medium, been around for well over 100 years. When I was doing mine, I realized that the Gray Lab timers, the uh, kind of gold standard of darkroom timers, didn't have all the features I wanted in my darkroom timer, so I built my own. I took a 10 by 10 electrical box and installed three timers, zero to 15 seconds, zero to 60 seconds, and zero to five minutes. The reason I did the three was I had a more precise scale depending on the length of the exposure I needed. I installed a little selector switch that allows me to pick the one I want, and I also installed a dimmer it allows me to adjust the intensity of the light bulb in the enlarger. There's a bat switch which turns on the enlarging mode, turns the whole system off, or turns the enlarger on full time. Obviously we're using a little lamp as an enlarger today. So what happens here is, in enlarging mode, I do a five second exposure, enlarger on, safe light off, five seconds later, and larger off safe light back on. If you're in another part of the dark room and you're doing a long exposure, you may want to have your attention drawn back to the fact that this thing is done. Obviously the enlarger light will go off and you may notice that. But I also installed something as you might have on your dryer, a really annoying and loud buzzer that lets you know your exposure is done. The other thing that's kind of interesting about the enlarging process is you may find that there's a part of your print or your negative that you want more or less exposed. It's called burning and dodging. If you are burning in an area and you want more exposure to a particular part of the negative, you might take a template, a piece of paper with a hole in it, and hold it in the light path of the enlarger to allow more light to go through to that part of the paper, the exposed paper. In light of the fact that you may want something less exposed, you will wave your hand or some object in the light path and also affect that. The interesting thing about burning and dodging is that you kind of want to do it for a fairly precise amount of seconds. And while you are doing that, you're attending to that and don't want to be looking at a clock and figuring out how many seconds have gone by. So inside the box, I installed a magical little 60 cycle per second timer, which has a little tab on it that engages, I think, part of a tin can. And when it goes around, it makes a nice little sound that allows you to count seconds audibly as opposed to having to look at a clock. So all in all, I was pretty happy with it. It had all the features I wanted in a darkroom timer. There's a duplex outlet on the side which allows you to plug in your safe light, in this case an antique Kodak safe light, and your enlarger. The duplex outlet has been separated into two units, which you can do with an outlet. And the wiring therefore runs through this maze here and does the things that I described. So it worked well for me then. Um, maybe it'll work well for somebody again in the future but I pulled it down from the rafters of the garage up at the lake house and figured I would share it with you because I thought it was kind of a fun thing. And um, it's a bit of a project to build something like this. Fortunately, I was working in a place where I had access to the tools and equipment necessary to make this happen. Uh, but I highly recommend those types of features in a timer for a darkroom uh, just because it makes life easier, makes it more fun. Have a great day.